Well, it looks like the economic crisis is over. Last week, it was discovered in Washington that the Cash for Clunker campaign worked. The program has been heralded as a fantastic success. It was so successful that uh, after we spent $1 billion, the House rushed to give $2 more billion, and everybody's delighted that it's going to stimulate the car industry. But when you stop and think for a minute, it's pretty absurd on what's going on here. Print up a lot of money and give it to a few people to buy a car and the numbers look better and therefore this is the way the economy is going to be uh, taken care of and recovered. But there's a lot of fallacies in this, obviously. Um, this program, when it was first voted on, was meant to help people who had old cars and they were in low income bracket, to help them buy a new car. Didn't do anything of the kind. The poor people, the people with poor credit, did not come and buy a car. They didn't go through this process. Matter of fact, this program is being paid for by the poor people because they're taking the clunkers off the highway. They're deliberately calling these in. If they, they do end up in these car lots, they're purposely destroyed, which undermines the very market that the poor people depend on. Not only that, the poor end up paying a bigger price for this than anybody else because there really is no money in the bank. We know that. Uh, they can't tax anymore and uh, the borrowing is more difficult than ever. So what do we do? Back to the old story again. Let's just print up the money. Printing up money gives you inflation. Who suffers the most? The poor people who didn't get to buy a car. Just like the poor people who we thought we were going to give all these new houses to for, with all these affirmative action programs. Guess who lost all their houses and guess who are suffering the most? It's the poor. They and the, and the low middle income, they're the ones who lost the job and suffer from the consequences. But the really disturbing part about all this is that most people in Washington, at least those who voted quickly to put in another $2 billion in this program, actually believe these are good programs. And they think they help the poor. They think they, st they stimulate the economy. And it's total foolishness. I mean, if, if you had somebody come and propose and say there's a new business in town and he needed customers, but he had a good savings account, enough to buffer himself over for a while, but he takes money out of the savings account and he goes out on the street, he passes out money. He says, you can have this money from me if you come and spend it in my store. And they do that. And then he brings up the cash register and says, wow, today I made a lot of money. I mean, it, this, this whole notion that government can stimulate the economy by, by doing this is just as absurd as that. So we still obviously have a long way to go. And for right now, uh, you know, the markets and others are starting to feel a little bit better. But quite frankly, I think that we're just digging a bigger hole for ourselves. Debt is increasing. Government intervention is increasing. And there there's no end in sight. We still have the basic problems. Government is too big. They spend up too much money. They interfere too much in all our personal activity, overseas activity, our economic activities, and they're dependent on deficits. They're dependent on regulations. They're dependent on the Federal Reserve to keep printing money. But I'm working on the assumption that time is running out. We are doing well in trying to expose the Fed for what they're really up to, but time is running short, and I would anticipate in the next year or two, people aren't going to be cheering and saying, what, the only thing that we need now is another cash for conquer program. It worked for cars, why can't it work for everything else? But truth will win out in the end, and uh, I think this absurdity of last week and this argument that uh, we just pass out cash and they buy cars is a help to the economy, a complete fallacy.